right into this itrp domain and uh, currently i am part of uh, one of the mnc as a supply chain functional role great great <clears throat> so you are uh, into specializing finance or uh, supply chain you said uh, no no supply chain Uh, so I think we can start this session. I'll uh, introduce myself. So my name is Raghavendra. I am a functional consultant specialization. My specialization is supply chain management uh, and warehouse management. And coming to my experience, I have over eight years of experience uh, covering across business areas. And uh, I'm an MBA uh, specializing in logistics and supply chain management. So currently I'm working with an MNC as a functional consultant uh, for a manufacturing uh, processes based in metal industry. Uh, that's all about me. Uh, anyone else would like to introduce themselves? Uh, and before we begin today's session, uh, let's uh, start with the introductions and uh, so that we can understand uh, Ourself and I also need to get an understanding about uh, every one of you so that accordingly we can plan our sessions, uh, upcoming sessions. So, as we can see, we have uh, uh, Sumit here with over 20 years of experience in uh, supply chain. So, if anyone else would like to introduce themselves, yeah, hi, I went on this side, like, uh, hi, Anand. Uh, yeah. Uh, so almost 10 plus years of experience in the field of uh, trade and logistics, basically uh, like knowledge about uh, product information management, account payable, receivable, uh, sales and marketing, procurement and sourcing, even inventory management and quality management also. But I have never touched the part of advanced warehousing and uh, uh, manufacturing. So currently associated with the MNC company. Okay. Right. So right. just I came here for the manufacturing like uh, like having the knowledge of product manufacturing domain. I mean, my only one concern is, uh, don't take it in a different way, okay? Before mm -hmm. also, I took an, uh, like uh, this training from uh, some other people, okay? Like, so that was just a basic, basic kind of a training. So this training is going to be on a scenario based or uh, like uh, what, uh, what you have uh, like uh, learned from your prior experience. So are you going to put all those things in this uh, training? So that will be, like really beneficial for all of us so my concern is only that y yes anand so absolutely that is a genuine concern but uh, so that depends on the other students which are joining the batch as well so if there is someone who is a fresher so then i would need to start with the basics and then uh, we can pick up the pace once uh, everyone is at the same page then maybe we can take the real example scenarios and then go into depth of the so According to, in my perspective, first I would need to ensure that each and everyone who is joining the batch would be on the same page. So once we ensure that, then yes, uh, we can uh, go into depth and discuss uh, all the scenarios which you which you would like to. Yeah, hi, Raghavan. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, this is advanced manufacturing, right? Uh, basic things we have to know about the supply chain management and functional consultant with the MB330. But MB335 is the advanced skills. The freshers means uh, they need to understand the first supply chain. After Correct. that, only they Absolutely. need to come from the, the supply chain management functional concentrate, right? So I that, think exactly. uh, you need to cover the advanced level only. That is the reason. I'm also coming like that only. If you are teaching basics means that uh, basics means in MP330, we, we know everything. Right. Absolutely. I mean, that's what I'm saying. So majority of the students if everyone is experienced here and everyone is having exposure on product information management uh, in that case i need not cover the basics so i'm not uh, uh talking about the experience once here if if by any chance if there is any fresher or if there is anyone who is not having an uh, uh, let's say if someone is from finance background and don't have exposure on the other parts of the module uh, which are related to the supply chain so in the in those cases i may have to cover the basics so that will not be the entire session so of course so there may be one or two days where we'll be covering the basic parts and then we'll go into the advanced uh, part of the session i don't mean to say yeah. that the entire session will be on the basics then 
Yeah, hi, Raghavara. Hi, Sharif. Hi, I have a question. Is it uh, covering the EDI and PAS? Uh, yes, it's also for, uh, production control. Want it? Uh, not the EDI. So this is the curriculum which we'll be following uh, through the entire course. So these are the topics which will be covered. Uh, so coming to your question, uh, EDI is not a part of the production. I mean, in this curriculum, we are not covering that. Mm -hmm. So these, so the these are the topics which will be covered in uh, two months of course. So first is a basic of product information management, which will be required. Uh, basic setups there for uh, manufacturing process. And within manufacturing process, we have uh, two different uh, manufacturing processes, uh, discrete and process. So those will be covered in uh, second and third and the fourth and fifth week of the uh, duration. And then we'll be covering the lean manufacturing. And uh, then the last part would be ma master planning. And in the last uh, week, eighth week, we'll be having uh, uh, real business scenarios and uh, what may be the uh, requirements of the clients in production uh, control module uh, from the real, real client requirement. So we can discuss those uh, real life scenarios then. Okay. So it will cover with the advanced warehouse one, that's all right, uh, in production. Advanced warehouse management is not a part, so that itself is a different manage, uh, module altogether. No, no, in production, in production manufacturing. Yeah, yeah with, with specific to production control, uh, the setups which are required for the warehouse management will be covering those. Uh, like uh, okay. we will be having a site 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 specific manufacturing, so so setups lo required for those will be covered. Hmm. So talking about the uh, yeah, sorry, please go ahead. Uh, anyone else? No, no nothing. Uh, just one thing about uh, uh, Raghavendra ji. Uh, just yeah, to know yeah. about the like uh, methodology, the uh, like. First, we need to understand the like uh, uh, basic transactions and then uh, accordingly, what are the different setups uh, required to perform that transactions? What is the effect of different parameters and setups or vice versa? Yeah, I mean, uh, so my way of uh, teaching, my understanding would be first, uh, we'll, I'll take you through the, I mean, before we take you through the end-to-end -end sessions, we'll be taking a look at the product level setups, which are very important for any, I mean, for any manufacturing process, we, the crux is the product. That is what we are manufacturing them. So we'll cover all the setups related and the uh, required at the item level first, which are to be defined. So once that is done, then I'll take you through an end-to-end -end process of a manufacturing process, right from the start uh, where demand is created and uh, where we procure and then we produce. So once end-to-end -end is completed, then from there, we'll go and cover each and every stage, how demand is being created and uh, once demand is created, what is happening at the production level. So at master level, so from there, we can, I think each and every point will be covered. Till the end uh, where quality order is generated. So if I take you through a setup process of item level and then setup process of a discrete manufacturing process and then setup of man process manufacturing. So there is a possibility that uh, we may uh, forget that uh, by the time we are doing this. So at every point of uh, course, uh, I'll ensure that the end to end process is uh, always being running and we are ensuring that we are recollecting the processes which we have discussed on the day one process as well. Yeah, so that, that would be uh, quite correlated because you know, setups parameters are very uh, uh, <clears throat> crucial things. So understanding of it uh, into which specific scenario and what is the particular reasons to enable or disable that would be so that that's uh, my concern basically. Thanks, Correct. thanks for yeah. your answer. Yeah, so that, 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 that's how we'll be going with so that we I mean, at the end of the course, it should not be that uh, at the day one, what we have discussed, we are uh, forgetting that. So at every day, we'll be going through an end-to-end -end process and ensuring that um, what parameter has done, uh, at what stage it is uh, taking an action, and what is the use of it. So 
every parameter we'll be discussing at the end of end-to-end -end, -end scenarios, we'll be discussing those things. Yes, yes, and certain prerequisites accordingly to perform that transaction, right? Sorry, didn't get that certain prerequisition. Yeah, certain certain prerequisites we have to assume that this is the prerequisite uh, for perform this transaction. Correct, uh, correct. correct. So, for suppose we need yeah, to do yeah. the product, uh, we need to configure. We have uh, some prerequisite to set up like that. Manufacturing correct, also, correct. we need to do the some prerequisites to like uh, template wise, master data wise. We have some required fields are there, right? He's asking correct. that question. Yeah, so prerequisition, I am assuming that uh, like we, so to post any transaction in production control as well. So we would need uh, the, uh, uh, what do we say that, uh, all the transaction and item group postings to be defined at the finance level as well. We we need to have a main accounts and all those things mm -hmm. defined. So all those setups will, will not be discussing the finance part. So that will be, so you guys need to assume that uh, that these are the accounts which are defined for so and so transactions. So I'm assuming that since uh, everyone is experienced here, so so I'm assuming that everyone of you are aware, well aware that uh, how integrated D365 tool is. So at every stage uh, we'll have an impact at each and every module. Yes, sir. not not uh, specific that this particular uh, laser is required for this, but just uh, like where this particular uh these things would be ultimately going into that sir not not on a detail but just an uh, overview would be kind of yes yes that yes. that's fine yeah that that's fine yeah. great great thank you <clears throat> yeah uh so next anyone else would like to go uh, Ravindra, do we get uh, real-time uh, scenarios as well Yes, uh, real time scenarios as well will be covered. Uh, so, so first, my uh, way of going will be my first priority would be to complete the uh, curriculum which has been provided to you. So, okay. every day session is one hour session. So, so my first priority would be to cover these. Let's say in week one, uh, if we have completed this, then yes, we can discuss the real real time scenarios and. Uh, so of course I have kept last week of uh, eighth week for discussing these things. Like uh, I was planning to give you guys a project and uh, and maybe a design which is uh, 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 received from the, directly from the client, one of my clients. Uh, of course I'll not be mentioning the names and uh, <laughs> just to keep my uh, profile as well safe site. So some minor changes will be there uh, from the requirement, and I'll be giving you as a project for that. So as a functional consultant, how would you get uh, gather those requirements from the client? What would you take the actions as a functional consultant? So yes, uh, a project uh, at the eight week and the real time scenarios we can discuss orally uh, while uh, going through these uh, end to end sessions. So, and, and, uh, Ragman, and, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Actually, Anand is said. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Like when the point is that when we go for an interview for a manufacturing or advanced warehousing, okay, mm -hmm. so the interviewing is well known that this guy is like he understands the other topics, like the basic topic of product information management, account payable receivable, mm -hmm. or like inventory and all. So he is going to ask the scenario based real time, uh, like uh, questions, okay. So everybody yes. who are joining this manufacturing training, like, uh, so he's the end point is the end goal is cracking the interview, right? So right. after your training, will all be able to like uh, like answer all the questions of the interview? I mean, it's slight a silly question, but uh, it's a concern from my end, Raghavan. Hope you understand. Like mm -hmm. the training should be up to that level where we should be able to answer all the questions of the interviewer, right? Ab absolutely, so, Anand. I I agree. So in the last demo as well, there was a similar question where. Uh, a one candidate asked that uh, whether we'll be able to implement production control module to a client. So I answered as yes after this session. So you should be able to implement a production control module for a client. So so when you're able to implement that particular module, you should definitely be able to answer the HR's question or the interview panel question. So no doubt on that. So I'll I'll be ensuring that I'll, I'm covering real time scenarios uh, specific to metal industry. 
so since i have a experience in metal industry so we'll be we'll be giving you the real time scenarios and the issues which they are facing once the implementation is completed so both uh, from the implement implementation side and from the support side the issues which are being faced by the client and uh, also have one question yeah yeah yes and uh, so one question related to like uh, fashion and the other industries also in it cover our only metal industry what you have worked on you need to explain to us uh well i cannot uh, come focus on each and every i mean there are if i take an example uh, so there are many manufacturing industry so every day maybe we can take an example of a specific industry and uh, cover an end to end scenario okay so uh, i mean just... since i have experience in metal industry so i'll be taking real time if you if you are expecting real time examples so then ex you will be getting metal industry examples of real time business scenarios see why yeah, i there is a yeah, there is a reason because uh, in your 8 years of experience only one industry you have mentioned right but uh, you are uh, working for manufacturing for small tool teams right uh, only metal industry you have mentioned that is the reason only i must apart from that right. uh, not have any right right so yes of course we can uh, take an examples of uh, different industries but yeah i'm uh, metal industry why i'm emphasizing is uh, real time examples you can only expect from the metal industry so uh, my entire experience has been in metal industry uh raghavan ji just in line yes. to this uh, uh, communication uh, okay. that broadly if we can categorize this uh, whole uh, session different mm -hmm. things, right it would be cover uh, uh, all all the uh, different uh, manufacturing industries like discrete kanban and lean means like uh, 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 it's engineering and uh, process manufacturing both both sort yes. of yes so lean yeah. manufacturing is also covered uh, this is something which will be which will uh, go through an overview of this so depending on the understanding we'll go into the depth so this is just a concept which is implemented in both the process and discrete manufacturing so we'll cover in detail both discrete and manu uh, discrete manufacturing and process manufacturing we'll cover in detail uh, these two topics which are the uh, main crux of this uh, course yeah I means like process manufacturing it's uh, uh, like also have we are also gone through the like uh, couple of uh, real time uh, sessions accordingly right yes 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 okay, okay. because the, broadly we can categorize it's basically two different industries like one is discrete and another is processing so absolutely that would be the right thanks yeah okay yeah see so, yeah, i mean if we are covering both these i think uh, majority of the manufacturing processes or or any industry i could say fashion or uh, pharmaceutical or uh, uh, beverages or um, automobile so we should be covering uh, all the industries uh, based on these two manufacturing processes yes yes correct so whichever industry you are working on you guys need to assume that uh, how things would work in your particular industry i can take an example of both the manufacturing processes but yeah in your particular industry you would need to assume or you can raise up that question if you want to cover a particular industry uh, point of view then yes we can take an examples for that as well then go go ahead with that uh anyone else left out to be introduced uh one quick question raghavan ji yes sir yes sir uh like uh, for this session you are going through the like uh, standard environment this system correct right correct yes and and for practice session we need to follow the same uh, sort of environment right yes standard d365 which is the latest version i'll be using uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> so we'll be using usmf as the legal entity there
and uh, my question on uh, on this would be like uh, uh, maybe what, what, like uh, it's a bit bit little bit little uh, higher expectation but uh, uh, just asking uh, yeah. like any any like for specific different uh, uh, processes if you can support on different use cases for practice for mm -hmm. our practice would be a great used cases in the sense you so, you are saying real time business scenarios to, to which practice are, to practice to practice into this uh, uh, system if if mm -hmm. you can provide us uh, some uh, uh, structured uh, use cases if you right. if you can right that would be a great great help to us uh, so we can understand and practice it accordingly and have enough uh, confidence uh, in ourselves yeah so used cases in the sense i'm i'm not getting you your uh expecting an this, environment this, this, this or, uh, just cases test yeah, cases so like, basically a different explain. different scenario it's yeah, a basically yeah. a different scenario or we can say test cases while we are uh implementing modules specific modules we we have assumed the all different uh permutation comp uh, combinations of uh system that if if this is happened this is the scenario what happened if it is this one what so that that so basically yes yes yeah. so yes i mean uh, as i said earlier so we will i'll be providing real time business scenarios which we have received uh, so that that should be covered <clears throat> i i mean yeah, to it uh, by it, it is uh, like in a structured way where uh, like some uh, uh, documentation format like uh, test cases format etc where we can go through our own self uh, without any uh, much little help or uh, dependency on uh, uh, others right uh, so yes if can it I is... speak uh, yeah i have one question yeah. Kanchal. Uh, uh, yeah. don't think uh, yeah functional consultant uh, you are coming from the supply chain functional consultant expert means you can expect the uh, this thing functional consultant level only because it's the functional consultant level only. Once you have configured everything only, you can able to produce the test cases, right? Once the setups and everything that, after that, they need to deploy into the test environment only, you can able to test it, right? So first we need to understand the entire flows and everything set up. After that, based on the user story and based on the use cases only, we need to write about these things. So my understand should be, I'm expecting from this training is functional consultant level not tester level. Tester level means basically sufficient. But functional consultant level, business scenarios, we need to cover all the setups and everything. Because testing right. part is very small thing. Uh, and you are asking use cases means uh, uh, that is uh, uh, like a certification when you are going for certification, you're expecting that uh, a scenario C is asking from the certifications. Uh, right. I think your expectation should be like that, right? Correct. But my no, expectations no. clearly. My no, expectation no. is. What, what's your good name? My... What's your good name? Kumar. Kumar. No, no, Kumar. Sorry, uh, sorry to like. Uh, it's a uh, my assumption would be different, right? Because I'm I'm a from supply chain. Uh, obviously, uh, I have a uh, working with uh, some good companies, and without uh, knowledge, nobody's uh, preferring to as a role like functional consultant on architect level but being on to uh when you are a uh on a different track or with different module we we i am not sure i am i am an expert into my trade and logistic area but production it's a different area so what are the different situations over there that i am not uh, assuming right so that's a, in that context i uh Raise I this can question. understand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can understand. Yes. Consult. That is yes. the reason only. I am saying. I am saying. Uh, that if if person has no experience, no knowledge, how he can think that that uh, his uh, imagination would be very very limited. Yeah. Right? So, consult, sorry to interrupt you both one, guys. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 let me answer your both question. Uh, what uh, you can expect through this course is. So yes, uh, Sumit, as per your question, uh, I will be, give, I mean, test cases is something which is uh, 
which is again as a, a functional consultant role is to define the test cases as per the design or the requirement which is gathered from the client. So once it is implemented, so so test cases is not something which I'll be providing you in a structured manner. So I'll be providing you a requirements which are received from the uh, client. So based on the requirement, you would need to, uh, through this course, you would be getting an understanding that how you would need to test this particular requirement in the production control module. So that is what uh, you can expect from me. So not the documented test cases or the used cases uh, with particular design. So, so that would be a, uh, that is something which I'm giving you a platter arranged in uh, plate. So you will need to put in efforts to, to get an understanding on that. So you will be getting a requirement only. According to the requirement, you will need to understand the things, how this would be implemented in the system and uh, how you would test this uh, in the system. Hope that answers your question. Uh, as a sample, okay. As a, any, not, not, not a single, like uh, any, any, no, not a simple, uh, any, for a sample, how it would be basically, or or you can sub you can say uh, suggest some uh, logs or something where we can find such kind of things. Yeah, during the course, yes, you will be shared some uh, blogs or the uh, website links where you can find the information related to the if you if you are encountering any challenges during practice sessions or if you have any questions. So, so there are a number of resources to be found on Google. So those will be shared, which I particularly use in my cases. So apart yeah, that's, from that, that's, that, that's uh, fine. That would be fine. That would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So Akumar, hope uh, that uh, also sets the correct expectation for you as well, right? Yeah, I'm expecting the. Uh, yeah, I'm expecting the functional. Uh, Thing only entered the flows and uh, whatever the master data we need to set up the requisites to configure yes. each and everything i'm not expecting the uh, testing level i'm expecting the expert level because this is the expert level training not uh, right supply chain level right right it's a just a point of that particular area it's not a testing area just as justification or uh, my query, whatever is your understanding, you can consider it accordingly, right? I am as also working as a uh, MNC functional architect on supply chain, so I am not thinking the going on a testing for specific thing, but it is just an area where it's a very critical part, right? Right. I am not. I am not understanding any wrong word. Right. No worries. So, I <clears throat> uh, hope everyone is uh, covered and uh, is having a correct expectations uh, out of this course. So, just to give you a glimpse uh, of this course, uh, what uh, so there is a small presentation uh, which we can cover. <clears throat> so, these are the course objectives. So, at the end of this course, uh, you should be able to have a have an uh, understanding of a discrete manufacturing process with perspective of P365 and process manufacturing, lean manufacturing, and master planning as well. And during this course, we'll be covering uh, journal posting related to the manufacturing process, uh, understanding of costing sheets. Uh, so at production level, uh, what are the costs which are implemented uh, and what profit levels you can set up at the finished code. So these are the things which we'll be covering in the costing sheets topic. <clears throat> and uh, resource and capacity management is something which we'll be covering. So at the end of this course, you should be able to uh, answer any questions related to these. So introduction to manufacturing, again, as we have discussed, uh, so this is a discrete manufacturing process is something which is, uh, you can take an example of uh, automobile industry in here, so not a discrete uh, manufacturing process involves uh, different uh, items. So it is not a one-go uh, manufacturing. So it uh, has different raw material components, which you need to procure from outside as well. <clears throat> like in automobile industry, 
a manufacturing manufacturer of a car is not manufacturing the end to end all parts by himself a motor motor is something which is uh, uh, manufactured by someone and tires are manufactured by someone they procure all the items from different uh, vendors and then assemble it at their manufacturing unit and then they sell off the finished good as a car so that is an best example of discrete manufacturing process <clears throat> And process manufacturing, you can take an example of uh, uh, beverages. So like Coca-Cola, we so that is the best example of process manufacturing process, uh, which uh, have a chemical composition or a formula as uh, its uh, uh, crux to manufacture that particular product. To manufacture the Coca-Cola, they would be having a formula, which is a different composition of every uh, uh, composition of a different items within the formula and um, yeah so that that's what uh, so a you can take example of uh, coca-cola or milk or uh, basically fmcg industry uh, should be covered in uh, process manufacturing process which has a specific recipe to be created or uh, a formula to be created or you can say pharmaceutical industry example as well here <clears throat> and uh, basic difference again uh, between uh, discrete uh, versus process manufacturing process <clears throat> and uh, just to give you a glimpse uh, uh, i have introduced this slide only to make you understand that how simple is manufacturing to understand it uh, so if you remember this uh, cement manufacturing diagram so everyone uh, this was this is introduced to the students who are studying in seventh standard class so right from seventh standard uh, we are introduced the manufacturing processes of uh, cement manufacturing and uh, alcohol manufacturing so so right from the seventh standard it is introduced so imagine that how easy it is uh, to understand the manufacturing process so that is introduced in school level as well And master planning. Master planning is uh, uh, a complex module uh, which is uh, almost touching each and every module of D365. Uh, so during the master planning, what we'll be mainly discussing is uh, how required and uh, how, how the requirement is fulfilled, how the demand is generated. Uh, demand is generated through different ways, uh, like through sales order or through transfer orders as well. So we'll be covering both the scenarios and once demand is generated, uh, how we are fulfilling it uh, through using which plan uh, we are fulfilling it. So there are four different plans which we can use uh, uh, while creating master planning. So each plan has its, has its own impact, uh, how the demand is going to be fulfilled. So we'll be covering those uh, scenarios as well in master planning. So that's all about the overview of this course. Uh, if anyone has any questions, we can uh, uh, discuss further on that. So th these are the, this is what you can expect. Uh, I hope uh, everyone has a clear expectations uh, at the end of this course, what you'll be learning and what you'll be understanding through this course. Uh, last but not least, uh, like, do we have uh, some summary notes, uh, something main points uh, as per each session, what we have covered or the PPT which you are using? Uh, PPT, I mean, you, you will be shared the recording of the sessions uh, which uh, we have, uh, uh, which we'll uh, be going through. So recordings will be provided. Uh, material is something uh, which uh, PPTs will not be provided. Uh, but yeah, say summary notes, which uh, which we are going through the uh, duration of the course. So we'll I'll, I can jot down that for you, and we can I can share that uh, summary notes at the end of this course every day. Yeah, that that will be also fine. So just uh, like uh, keeping the like bullet points to be recap if we uh, need to go through the like uh, in our ongoing Correct. session. Yeah. yeah. So this curriculum, uh, which uh, which is, which you are seeing on the screen, that will be shared with you. So within which uh, what we are covering, so th those to topics will be jotted down. So yes, that can be shared with you. So again, uh, 
talking about the and yeah. one more thing i have one question are you creating mm -hmm. new new company to show us or us mm -hmm. no, i'm using... i'm expecting the new co new company that is also. okay see uh, uh, this is uh, been told before new company is not uh, created uh, during the production control because if i am creating a new legal entity so i would need to cover the finance part as well for you so production control is something which is uh, so integrated that i would need to do the entire setup which is related to the finance as well so i am expecting that uh, a basic knowledge of the setup of in of a legal entity you are having that so to answer your question no, legal no. entity is not created no no will be no, using i am expecting like that means you are creating one new legal entity whatever the setup you don't need to explain for us you have done the setups from your end and explain the right. in the fresh environment why i am asking you uh, that should be for uh, uh, learning perspective we are facing a lot of error if you are uh, getting the usm of means that is already predefined by the microsoft the system has done the entire setups we are not getting any errors that is the reason i am looking for the fresh implementation right so if if Got it is a concern about the yeah i understand your concern so if there are any uh, if you have any known errors which you are getting while practicing or uh, so what uh we can cover through the new legal entity as well but uh, in that perspective I think, Raghav, Raghavind, I think the question he is raising we cannot set up the posting profile, right? Means we have to take the USMF because if we take a new legal entity, all the posting profile and all that finance part also we have to cover. Am I correct on yeah. this? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Because, Absolutely. Yeah, because that will take a very long time then, I think. The posting Absolutely. profiles and all that, we have to make it happen. Because when we will take okay. the transaction part, which account it is hitting, we have to also configure that. Correct. Correct. So that's what I'm trying to explain here. So production control is so integrated that uh, you would need to define the entire finance setup as well in order to complete the production control. So we are not covering up any part of finance here. So we are only focusing on production control. I'm not <clears throat> asking any finance. Uh, I'm for the finance, retail, and advanced warehouse management, other things as well. And apart from that, these manufacturing also, one of the projects I have worked for the only one module only. What I am expecting is no need to explain in the class. I have already mentioned how done back end. You can just show me the new environment. That is the reason I'm asking. I'm not asking to explain in this class. Before you can set up, you can show it to in the new environment. I'm asking. Right. So any house I would I would need to create it. I mean. Okay. Then uh, if uh, only intention I see here is to go ensure that the all errors are covered so yes we can do that i can uh, create a new legal entity and show that all setups are done which are required to process the production control so during this session i'll not be covering those but uh, i'm assuming that you have an understanding at the back end what is happening there so yes i can i am asking means when we have to do French implementation <clears throat> import master data and everything we have to done our, our own only that is my intention we have done the project like that way, any interview we can able to crack it. Yeah, but uh, since I'm not be covering those, yeah, I understand. I understand your purpose and the reason. But uh, however, since I'm doing it at the back end, I don't think that is uh, helping or, or uh, making any benefit. Because I'll ensure that I'm not getting any errors while giving you the session. So that's how I'll be doing uh, this. <laughs> sorry to interrupt uh, both of you. Uh, yeah. If you can allow, I have one uh, opinion, nothing yes. as a solution. Uh, in this scenario, uh, Raghavanji, you can go with uh, some new fresh items where you can uh, have an already available items, but you can start from the scratch for that particular setup for that particular uh, required uh, <clears throat> prerequisite setups and configurations to perform yeah. in terms of production and control. That yes. would be given a fair idea what are the different challenges or uh, errors while coming to price uh, configure that things. Correct, correct. So that, that's how my approach would be. I mean, creating a new legal entity altogether is a, a this course would be not completed in four months as well. So, 
I'll be focusing on production control. For production control, I would need a warehouse, a site, and location as well, resources, and uh, work templates. So all these will be, I'll be creating new ones. Even the item as well, and a customer as well, and a vendor as well. So all these things will be new ones. So with respect to production control, these are the things which you would need to create uh, a new ones. And uh, all the errors which you are facing in production control uh, should be covered uh, when I'm creating new item, vendor, customer, warehouse, site, location. So these should be covered within these. And and uh, the crucial part, uh, uh, what I am uh, <clears throat> uh, considering uh, that that co uh, relevant that uh, uh, <clears throat> templates for importing <clears throat> data uh, specific to production control. Mm -hmm. Right, like uh, routes and uh, bombs, and uh, that that if you can run through the like some important fields, which are the mandatory to while we are importing that. Yeah, importing is something I don't think uh, route and no no. Bombs I'm are... not I'm not asking I'm not <laughs> asking the import process. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned to just understand the different important fields to while because in. Whenever we are uh, implementing this uh, module, there are a lot of mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, routes and bombs are there that we need to understand the that templates important fields. What is this particular uh, field needs to uh, cover? What sort of data? What is the validation required? That 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 sort of high level information relevant yes. data templates. Yes, yes. So yes, absolutely. So while discussing the formulas of bomb, yes, absolutely, those points will be discussed. So which are absolutely mandatory fields to be uh, in BOM or formula and what emphasizes it is having uh, during the process. So those points will be discussed uh, while creating the BOM or formula or while creating the resource or work uh, or while creating the work templates. So yes, those points will be discussed at uh, parameter levels as well. So what, uh, what significance this parameter will be having during the process. So those points will be discussed. I, I mean to I'm uh, again repeating uh, Kumar uh, uh, maybe it's your uh, concern maybe address or not I'm not sure but just I'm assuming that uh, that this that templates what we are expecting from data entity while importing any of the modules we require certain matters to be import before uh, starting that uh, things so before uh, we, we just collect data from the uh, uh, business team and we need to uh, we need to just uh, feel feel the required information into that based on to the work discussion with them they are not aware about what information uh, they, we are we are just asking in a yeah, simple yeah. way but we need to set up yeah. that relevant information into respective columns and fields so that's that's yes. kumar would be expecting right kumar yeah 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 yes yes that is so the that's, reason that's I'm asking about expecting. the fresh fresh, in, fresh implementation that is i'm um, expecting because uh, that implementation only or suppose if you are going to any interview also the customer when you need to face means if you are done the fresh implementation only you can able to give the correct answers to the customers who are deliver uh, if you are working in manufacturing if we are working in usm that means entire system given by the microsoft so you have to create the new thing you can to done and click on new and given everything it's completed but if you have done the fresh implementation means you have facing a lot of issues it is depend upon other modules means in real time other people are helping you but in that we need to practice like that means you can definitely able to crack the interview in first interview itself yeah so, so <clears> that's why this time will clear it so like understanding the uh, important fields into specific data templates if it, whenever it is uh, applicable that that's uh, uh, our expectation ragwinji right yeah, I mean, as I said, uh, so with respect to production control, uh, when I'm creating a new customer or vendor or a product, so when I'm creating a product itself uh, in this uh, first week, so this is a very important part for production control. So all major setups uh, which are relate, which are happening at the item level are very important uh, to process the manufacturing process. So 
the, in the first week is uh, first week is a very important se uh, session uh, to get an understanding on discrete manufacturing process manufacturing and as well as uh, lean and uh, master planning so during this week we'll be covering the most important parameters or the setup which is required for manufacturing process so again legal entity creation is not possible because that will take consume a lot of time and i'm not a finance expert as well so finance i'll not be touching but yes i'll ensure whatever errors if you have any known errors uh, while practicing you're getting some errors uh, because so you, we can discuss those things so what I'll ensure is uh, I'll ensure that the production can with respect. Uh, Raghavendra, uh, Raghavendra, Raghavend, sir, I'll interrupt a little bit here, please. Uh, like, uh, yeah. suppose you are uh, running a bomb journal, right? Mm -hmm. So will you be providing all the transactions, the vouchers, and all that? Like, uh, can we check that one, like while the training? Like, what yeah, is the while, while, of... Yes, sir. so but the the costing sheet is in included here. So bomb is in with the costing so whatever no just bond journal was just an example for me like suppose we are running a purchase order or a sales order okay so I mean, finally we uh, check when, uh, we, when we when we go to the inventory we go to the transaction part we check all the which accounts it's hitting or what are the vouchers and all that so so the same thing will be uh, like taken part in this manufacturing training also yes yes so oh. i understand uh, why you're asking this question because i said uh, i'll not be touching the finance part so so oh. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll be touching those transactions which are taken place during this production control process. So when I'm estimating a production control, uh, so there are four different stages, five different stages of a uh, production estimate uh, uh, and then consume, release, uh, start and then end. So during this every stage, uh, there are different transactions and the uh, different journals being posted, which you can see on the left side here, pick list journal, route card journal, job card journal. So these journals which are being uh, posted so those will be discussed okay thank you thanks for clearing my doubts yeah my issues <clears throat> yeah so if any other questions we can continue or i have i have uh, i'm done from my side if you have any questions we can Continue. Yes, you are going to explain them in this scratch right? like uh, how to uh, create a bill of materials uh, from the basics, right? Yeah, yes, right from the beginning. That that's what. So right in the first week, we'll be taking a look at the product information management. So since we are manufacturing okay. the product, uh, we'll be having most of the setup part done in the product level itself, which is respect okay. to production control. So let it be bomb formula or master planning setup or uh, posting profile setup all those will be covered in the first week so this is very important uh, part of the course the first week of the course <clears throat> so uh, when will the next session on monday or uh, tuesday tuesday 5th of december is the date uh, we are starting this uh, uh, course so timings would be 7 30 a.m to 8 30 a.m monday to friday Oh, oh, uh, uh, can you please repeat one second? I lost. Uh, is, is this uh, is this course starting from Monday to Friday or Tuesday to Friday? No, no. starting from Tuesday, fifth uh, of December is the start date. So weekly Monday to Friday will be the course time, seven thirty a.m. to eight thirty a.m. Uh, course fee details uh, well you need to discuss those with the training di uh, institute directly okay yeah, yeah. so uh, right. uh, my expectation is i hope you can understand fresh implementation have done for the manufacturing that setups you have done back end okay yeah so uh, so just for you, uh, yes, I'll create a new legal entity and uh, related to the setup part, I'll complete those uh, setups at the back end. But yes, uh, during the session I'm giving uh, uh, related to the production control setups. Uh, so we'll be discussing only those part of the parameter setups. Yeah. Along, along with uh, relevant uh, data templates. 
Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. No issues. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions anyone have? Uh, hello, Raghavan Anand. Last question. Uh, yes, sir. Like, <laughs> see, in the institute, what happens? Usually, the institute people will tell to the trainer, kindly finish the course as soon as possible. I know I am from Delhi and CR. It happens. Okay. So, right. when the money goes to the training institute, means they're least bothered about the student training and all that. So, they'll just tell to hurry and just finish the course as soon as possible. And that has a negative impact on the students okay you will get your money the institute will get the money please sir don't take it in a different way okay so right. end of the day end of the day the students get suffer so hope this will not happen here actually well uh, personally i would not agree to that <laughs> the commitment which i am giving you from from a trainer's perspective i'll be completing the course as per the schedule which is being showing on your screen right now so end date. No, sir, that, that's okay. See, see the, see the yeah. topics are there. You'll just yeah. give a topic of five minutes. You'll discuss. It doesn't matter that the students are uh, like uh, they're understanding or not because your topics are going to be finished. Miss, my, see, please, it's not a complaint. It's a concern, sir, totally. Okay. Yeah, so I hope understand. means the hope uh, this is not going to happen with us because the course which you have prescribed that will be in a detailing form. Correct. Absolutely. And, and so, see, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, you. I, I see that you are talking from your previous experience, maybe. But yes, uh, yes. I, so, so far, I have trained uh, 30 batches uh, within my organization. Actually, Ragan, so, what happens, even even Institute in Delhi, and uh, they contact me and they do the same thing. OK, they have told me you'll take the money and as soon as. But as a concern, as a human being, I have always denied because if you're taking money of somebody, okay, yes, there should be a matter of trust in between the students and the teachers. So hope you're getting me what I'm saying. Yeah. Absolutely, Anand, absolutely. So see, my way of uh, teaching would be, I'll ensure that each and every one of you is learning at least something. I mean, I would not expect the 100% course would be giving you the end-to-end -end process because ultimately learning is just a giving you a knowledge of what is happening at the back end. But the real time scenarios are always different. When you're working, you may not be using these principles at all. So the client requirement may be different. So my only objective while giving this session would be to ensure that you're getting what you're expecting. So I'll ensure that at the end of this course. So if not, maybe we can extend the course as well for two weeks as well. So that that's how this will go. So that is a commitment from my side. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate Thanks. Yeah. Please do not take it in a different way. It's just a concern, sir. Okay, please. Ab absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'm not, I'm no, not no, that is the same. Same. Everyone has the same uh, concern, but uh, uh, you rightly pointed. Anand, thanks. Yeah. So if if I go somewhere to learn something, I would expect the same thing. I mean, so at least something I should be learning. I mean, something new. Anything else anyone would like to discuss? Uh, just last thing. Uh, for for yes. any kind of uh, uh, practice session support or uh, like, can we form a, some uh, group where we can uh, post our queries or something like that? So it can be helpful to uh, everyone. Uh, yes. Once the batch is started uh, for, for the, on the first day, let's... Uh, uh, get all the numbers and uh, we can create a group. Of course, the discussion can be not during the office hours. I'm expecting every one of you is working. So, so during the training yes, sessions, yes, we can, yeah. So during the training sessions, we can discuss those uh, doubts. You can practice the uh, 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 session which was taken place today. Let's say say today we have uh, done a course and then 
you can practice that and tomorrow morning we can discuss that in between if you have any questions so that you don't forget those you can post those on the group so that other students also can get the benefit of that question yes yes that's thanks thanks <clears throat> All right, so we have one more minute left. Uh, I think uh, I have answered everyone's question, hoping to uh, see everyone on Tuesday. Uh, and uh, happy learning. And uh, hope you guys uh, have a good weekend. Yeah. Thanks, Ragavan.